great seeing you and it's it's incredible um having a chance to speak to you again because you seem to be this groundbreaking kind of artist and i can say that to you um and and the reason why is of course first this hour has 22 minutes mm-hmm. you being part of that which is amazing and second something that has never been done before and yeah. you are part of this before we get into the second part let me get yeah. to the first part how yeah. are things going with 22. Oh my gosh, it's going so well. I've been having a lot of fun. Um, we have a newer cast member, newer than me, Stacey McGonagall, and she's definitely become like my right hand man. Um, we've kind of fallen into a really great like comedic relationship with each other. Um, so that's been going well. Um, we have Mark, who's back. He wasn't there at the beginning of the show. Um, um, and, you know, working with Trent remains uh, an amazing, fun thing to do every single day. And it's been going really well. I'm really having fun. Okay, you just used the word amazing. This is where we get into the second part. (laughs) In a billion years, would I ever thought a show would be constructed? Notice I used the word constructed? Like this. Mm -hmm. But it's so clever, and it's something that everybody seems to love. So (laughs) for folks who don't know what we're talking about, what exactly is the new show that you're hosting, which I think is absolutely amazing? Thank you. So um, I'm hosting Best in Miniature. It's a competition show um, and it follows 11 um, contestants from all over the world who are building the miniature homes of their dreams. And it really is the miniature homes of their dreams because they all, whether they know it or not, have projected very large aspects of their own personalities into these homes as viewers will see um, when the show premieres. But it's uh, it was a great experience. Um, I had an amazing time watching these homes um, being built, but to watch like how the miniature community works amongst each other was truly a sight to see. They are so sweet with each other, so competitive, like in how meticulous they are and like how much work they put into their own projects, but they're helping each other. They're letting each other borrow crafts, showing each other how to, how to do certain things. It, it was the perfect experience. Okay, you just used another key word, They're a community, which I did not know about. I mean, I know of, and I can't think of his name, there's a gentleman from Toronto who actually created a miniature Toronto, oh. and which is on display. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've seen uh, his work. I did not know there was a community on this. Can you talk a little bit about this, please? Yes, it's so interesting. There's a huge community. And Um, I didn't, you mentioned it before, but it is like kind of like a very um, secret like hobby and love that a lot of people, niche, it's very niche. A lot of people really enjoy it, but don't talk about it as much until now. And I feel like that's what the appeal is. It's something that is, you know, only a few handful of people can do. Not everyone can do this. Even if you're an artist, like doesn't necessarily mean that that skill translates to making miniatures. And I think that's the biggest part of the show. And that's the reason why everyone should tune in. It's because it feels like you're watching a miracle happen. With the way you, you, I, again, right word, because <laughs> I kind of look at it as um, a painter artist slash surgeon, because yeah. like I can't do it because I've got shaky hands. Yeah. But what they do, mm-hmm. I think is amazing. What it was, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but I want to go back. What is it like for you to watch them actually do this because I don't know if I would have the patience like I can't even do like matchsticks and build Literally. that up I tear it apart exactly it's 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 so um I have nothing but respect for them because you're already in a very tense situation having to construct um something literally within the span of like a few hours but then on top of that you're being asked interview questions you're being asked to tell you know your life story while you're like trying to make a mini like toothbrush or whatever breaking but concentration exactly so it's it's just this um you have to have this incredible skill level you have to be you have to have a surgeon's hands you have to know um what looks good aesthetically but then also your space has to have a story and so like watching this marriage of all those skills and components come together it it feels incredibly lucky to get to watch but i was shocked at you know, we had one challenge where they had to make um, uh, toys from their childhood and somebody made a doll and I was so shocked to see a doll in one twelve scale. Like it fit within the first inch of my finger. 
And then wow. when we looked at it with a magnifying glass, like the doll had a face and everything. It, it just felt like um, insane to watch someone. So this, that. so this really is an opening door because we now, not just to see what the finishing product product is, we get to yeah. see how it's created and more importantly, the tools that exactly. are being used for this. Exactly. And that's what I really like, especially because when you're making miniatures, like obviously it's the best thing to have the best products available to you, the best materials. But a lot of these miniatures started out using whatever was available to them. A lot of them have jobs outside of doing um, their miniature hobby. So they have to work with whatever is um, available. Um, but to see them have like an entire workshop full of stuff, and to see how you know they know exactly what type of paper to use for this situation versus another type of paper, it's an entirely different skill set that again is, is incredibly niche. I think people um, should tune in just to see how niche it is. Look, I, I, not only would I tune in to just see what they're doing, mm. I'd tune in to see has has anybody made a, a miniature you yet? <laughs> No one's made a miniature me yet, but I did get to um, make um, a doll me. It's not necessarily one twelve scale, but um, it's like um, one of those photo booths where you kind of just stand in there and it takes a three yes. long. Yeah. But I know yeah. about those. Uh, I got to wait and see if somebody actually does that. Now, you're the host. You're not the judge. Yeah. We got two judges, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have Emma Waddell, um, who is a miniaturist from um, England, and she does phenomenal work. She's been working for ever and she truly has so much knowledge on um, the community of miniaturists and then we have michael Lambie, who's an interior designer from toronto he um he's worked with a lot of different canadian celebrities he's been on marilyn dennis um he has a really great knowledge of you know interior design and aesthetics so it was also really nice learning from them and seeing you know what they have to say about the miniatures because i would look at something and be like this is amazing and they would look at it and be like mm, no, no 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 and start <laughs> unpacking and you know really uh, being particular about what they wanted to see so it was nice to, to watch them work as well to see their skill set yeah without giving too much away though i will ask one question though what do you think was the most difficult challenge where you literally you were sweating for them to see if they were going to be able to pull it off oh my gosh i think the most difficult challenge was probably um, closer to the finale, I'm not going to reveal anything, but okay. particular challenge, they had to not only create an entire storyline for the aspect of their home that they were building, but the space that they had to use uh, was a lot of space. And when you're making a miniature, it's very easy to make a room that would be like, you know, eight by seven in real life. But when you have to work with the amount of space that they had to work with, I was just... I was floored at the time at how they used their time because you get only a few amount of hours. And I was like, no one's going to finish. Then I walked into the room and not only was everyone finished, but they had done the most elaborate, most beautiful things they could have possibly done with their outdoor spaces. So the most friendliest mad scientists that we will <laughs> ever have. I absolutely love this. Um, what do you hope folks are going to get from this series? Because really is, this is another um, aspect in the world that we get to, you know, the forbidden door gets dropped and we get to enter inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really hope that people get to, um, I, I guess, just like get a sense of tenderness from it. Because the driving force behind making miniatures, I think, for many of them is not only you know the repetitive nature and the meticulous nature of it where you really have to focus and concentrate and so it becomes meditative but i think a lot of them project their own personality and memories um into their miniatures so i i recommend everyone watch it with their family or their friends because there are really tender moments that i think we can all take from it congratulations on hosting this great series congratulations and all your success uh, happening over there at cbc cannot wait to watch this cannot wait to watch again with 22 and cannot wait to see what else you're going to be up to congrats on all of this oh thank you so much i really appreciate it